Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing um, just a, a makeup look and I'm going to be talking about a book I just recently finished. In fact, I finished it just last night. So while it was fresh on my mind, I was like, you know what, we'll do a sort of tutorial while I talk about the book. I thought that would be fun. And plus I want to try um, this new lipstick that I got from MAC. I, I mean, I kind of wore it already when I first got it just to you know, just to just to wear it. Um, but I haven't really done like a look with it. So I thought it would be fun. And it is the um it's a MAC lip so I think it's one of the in the luster line, if I'm saying that right, but it's called C Sheer. Um it's it's a little bit different from what I normally would wear. It's sort of almost like a I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a coral, but like a a dark coral maybe I, I don't know it's I want to say it's like more in like the not really red family but kind of close to the red family I don't normally wear a lot of um, colors like this most of the, my lipsticks that I wear are pretty neutral and toned down uh, so anyway I thought it would be fun sort of like maybe a new little series like um, lipstick and literature or you know whatever I want to focus on in that video as far as makeup like you know maybe some mascara that I just recently got so we'll call it mascara and literature I don't know it's some I'm trying to kind of play around with this and see how it goes because I just thought talking about books would be would be really fun and combining makeup and books two of my favorite things so I mean, be really extra fun so anyway um, we'll, we'll give it a go. I just want to mention this is the bralette that um, I showed y'all from Victoria's Secret in uh, maybe one or two haul, uh, videos back. Um, not sure when this one's going up, but anyway, I, I put it on with my Guns N' Roses t-shirt. I had got this at a Guns N' Roses concert that we went to about two years ago. Um, in New Orleans and I when I got the t-shirt I, I didn't want it like as a regular t-shirt so I cut the top to kind of make the the hole bigger up here so it could be off the worn off the shoulder and I cut the sleeves a little bit so they were more like cap kind of sleeve and then I also cut the bottoms the like the bottom piece off just just to kind of give it that rugged kind of rocker chic kind of look I think I'm gonna cut slits on the sides too um like, I've been having it for two years, and I've been wearing it like this, but every time I put it on, I'm like, I need some slits right here. So, I might do that before I wash it this next time. And the book we're going to be talking about today is The Lion Game, or The Lying Game. Let me say that right. I don't know why cool ass is coming out in me. Um, by Ruth Ware. And um, it's sort of like a mystery type thriller read. It was actually from Reese's Book Club. I don't know if you any of my viewers or readers or if you've heard um that Reese Witherspoon has sort of like a book club and you can kind of like join in with her and read whatever book of the month she picks this was May's book I believe yeah um I haven't really picked up any of her other books but um this I actually picked this up for um sort of a book club thing that I was doing recently but I thought it would be good since I mean since Reese liked it I thought you know figuring out I'm gonna like it too um it was it was actually pretty good but um we'll talk more about it in a minute I'm gonna also again I think in my last video I used this palette the bare metals palette by bare minerals I love this palette it's just so much fun it's just got some super fun colors in it and kind of going for like a rocker chic kind of look today so um I thought that would be kind of fun to go with this lipstick color. So, so yeah, we'll go ahead. I got my mirror waiting right there. I'll kind of zoom in just a little bit so y'all can kind of see a little bit what I'm doing. This, this hair, y'all, I'm sorry. I, I let it air dry today. And my hair, like, it's curly. I have, um, it's mostly curly, like, underneath. But, like, the top layer of my hair is, like, kind of straight and frizzy when I let it air dry. So, I took just I kind of wrapped a couple pieces around my my curling arm just to kind of help it look a little bit decent and then I pulled the front back because I was just wasn't having it in my face today um but anyway I've already put on my foundation I used my MAC foundation the the powder the studio fix one I think I also used that in my previous video as well it's just my go-to summer uh, foundation just to save time I thought I would go ahead and put on my foundation already and I did my brows and all that good stuff 
So I think today I'm going to be using um, maybe like these colors over here, like these six shades over here. Um, I'm not going to really use any over here. Um, I just sort of want like kind of like a metal type thing. And like I said, kind of rocker chic. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see how it comes out. So, um, okay. So the book, The Lion Game. I'm going to take this Ecro shade right here, kind of this creamy, creamy color. And I'm going to put that on my brow bone right here. So I finished it last night. It took me about two weeks to to read this book because um, um, I, I liked it. Like it, it had its moments. Like it would get really good and I'd want to sit down and read it a lot. And then it would just kind of die off. And it, and it was kind of just like, Okay, so um, let's just move on and what is the point, you know, like get to the story, like what's going to happen or what is going on. The whole time in the book, it kind of keeps you guessing like what, what happened. So it's these three girls, well, no, it's four, and it's from the point of view of um, one of them. Her name is Isa. I think I'm going to go in the color wheat, which is right here. Um, and just do put that in my um, in my crease. But her name is Isa, and um, right in the beginning, she is the whole book is from her point of view, and she has a baby. And this whole time, I'm thinking this baby is like a newborn baby because she's on maternity leave. Uh, she's some sort of lawyer, I believe, and she keeps talking, you know, with her significant other, her partner. They're not married. But they they keep talking about, you know, like weaning her off the breast because she's breastfeeding. But apparently the child is really latched on to the boob and she doesn't want to give it up. Well, so this whole time I'm thinking she's like, you know, some like a newborn. And so, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, it might take a little time. I mean, I have no, you know, I don't know how any of that goes. But I mean, my sister-in-law breastfed. So I know it does take a little time and patience to wean them off the boob. So nobody can take care of her except for Isa. I'm going to go into this satiny shade right here called Ball Gown. And I'm just going to use the um, brush that was in the palette, the more fluffier side. And I'm going to put that in the inner corner. Um, so anyway, so she takes the kid everywhere with her and it's latched a boob like 24-7. So that right there just kind of irked me. I, again, I don't... I don't know, I don't have any experience with that, but it just felt like, you know, that wasn't necessary for the book. Anyway, um, so the book goes back and forth from like present to past, and it's apparently her and three other of her girlfriends, they are at like this type of boarding school, I guess, it's called the Salton House. I'm guessing this, well, it does, it takes place in like London, kind of area. I think I'm going to dip into this cognac shade right here. It's like a um a brownish gold, like almost like a bronze kind of color, and I'm going to put that all on my lid. So yeah, they're all at this boarding school for like different reasons. It's not like a like a place where bad kids are or anything like that. It's just it's just a very like high class type boarding school. Um and they caught they they become friends. Well, two of them are already friends, um, Kate and Thea. And they already made this game called The Lying Game. And basically what it is, is you you tell a lie. And you, like, really, really back up that lie. Like, like you make that person believe that that lie is the truth. And, I mean, to me, it's kind of like being a pathological liar. Because... You get to the point where you've done lied so much about it that it's, you know, it's it's become true to you as well. But anyway, that's really not the, the case in the book. But they really take lies and, like, go with it. And um, anyway, people kind of get to realize that they are lying most of the time. 
and they are just known that they kind of get the reputation in the school for being like these liars. So um, Isa and Fatima come into the scene like they are, they come later on into the, the Salton house and they are befriended by Kate and Thea. I'm going to just take the blending brush that I use and just kind of blend in the crease what I just did. It's kind of exactly the look I was going with. I'm actually going to um, dip back into this wheat color that I put in my in my crease, taking the smaller end of the brush that was in the palette. I'm just going to tap the tip of it and just use this mirror. I'm going to bring it a little further down than I normally do. Um, so yeah, so long story short, they become friends. I mean, if you read the book, you'll, you'll, you'll get the whole story about how they become friends. So one evening, um, Isa gets the message, a text on her phone that says, I need you. So apparently that is code for come now. Um, something has happened. It's dire. I, I need y'all. So that was kind of like their code, like when they were growing up as kids and they haven't really talked from what I gather. It doesn't really ever say that I remember from the book. No, it's about 20 years, I think. They do say that. You get the feeling that they haven't talked at all because when they when they come to meet, so it's Kate that sent them the text, so that when they come to meet Kate, they all like, you know, it's kind of like a little reunion for them. So in the beginning of the book, it actually starts off with, with Kate. It's kind of like a prologue type, type thing with Kate walking her dog and the dog comes back um, to her like he's it's taken place by like a lake of some sort and or maybe an ocean I'm not sure because uh, they talk about high tides and things like that but um, apparently he was off in the water somewhere and she calls him back and he comes back to her with um, a human bone so after that we jump to Isa present day Isa and she's you know we hear, hear about the baby and the partner and all this stuff and then that's when she gets the text like later on um, in the evening so she like like just packs everything up baby latched on and everything like packs everything up and just heads to Salton wherever this is and it goes to meet Kate and the others I think we're gonna try some liquid eyeliner today see how it goes <laughs> with this look. I haven't worn like liquid eyeliner in a while. I mean, I've, I've worn this one already, but it's just, it's just been a while. So yeah, then the story kind of goes on to just, it's, it's really like nothing. You, it keeps you wanting to read it because you want to f find out like what happened, what did they do? And, uh, but it just keeps going on and on and on about all this, this, I mean, just like, character explanations and uh, which is which is fine which is fine I kick the I kick the camera but um, it, it just kind of like makes you lose interest I guess because you're like well what happened you, I guess that's kind of how they keep you into the book I, I don't know but I mean you get little tidbits here and there and your mind is constantly thinking so that's kind of what kept me going with the book like um, and then there's there's this other character, Luke, which is Kate's stepbrother. So in the sort of like throughout the book, like when when they go kind of back and forth a little bit, you kind of start to wonder where, like who? Okay, some one of them was involved with Luke. He has something to do with this, and and then apparently something had happened to Kate's dad. Kate's dad was actually a teacher at the school, and. Um, he's also an artist, so he taught like art at school, and, and him and Kate also lived in Salton, like not too far from Salton House, like right next to the ocean or whatever it was. So something has happened to him. So you don't really know until a little bit further on in the book where they're going, where they they when it's like a past scene, and they they finally kind of talk about what happened. So. So basically what the text was, I need you, is when her dog found the human bone. So apparently, uh, so the whole time I'm thinking, okay, well, well, something happened. They did something. They either, like, got rid of the body some kind of way, and it's, like, come up in the shore. Um, they, like, they killed somebody. Or 
something happened. Like, not necessarily like they committed the murder, but something happened. And it has to do with that human bone. And it has to do with in that area, in the Salton area. So that's pretty much what you get throughout the book. You just get scenarios that keeps you guessing, like, what happened. And it keeps leading you to these specific characters, like Luke. Um, and, and then, you know, Kate. How was Kate involved in this? And why is, you know, and, and then Thea and Fatima. And the, the other two characters, like, Thea and Fatima are kind of, like, sort of in the background. Like, they're there as friends because they were all a group, but they're kind of more in the background. You don't really get to know much about them, except for, like, Fatima is a physician, and um, Thea is pretty much, like, whatever had happened, like, pretty much just ruined her. She is pretty, what you get that she's, like, hopping from job to job, basically. I think she, right at the point, she was working at a casino, and um, she eventually loses her job. But she's an alcoholic and things like that. So it, like, played with her mind, whatever they had did. And she, like, never really got over it. Let's see if we can put on this mascara. I mean, this eyeliner without making a mess. Um, and talking at the same time. Okay, my camera did the infamous cutoff. And not gonna tell you that I did. And I just kept on talking. And I did my, um eyeliner and every well that that was pretty much it but I had to go back to see where I left off as far as like in the book but um so so yeah I think I was saying that you know talking about Fatima and Thea they're they were kind of in the background I mean they're like they're there as friends but they're kind of in the background you don't really get to know much about them um when when they were younger it was kind of like Kate and Thea were together were like a pair and then Fatima and Isa but yet they were all four friends and um this lying game one of the rules is that you do not lie to each other but you kind of find out throughout the book that they all really kind of have been lying to each other this whole time. And then at the end, it's like a, it's, it's like a realization that what they, what happened and what they did and that there's, there's going to be no more lying and, um, things like that. So it kind of all does come to a conclusion, but it was very anti-climatic, climatic for me. So anyway, the book kind of goes back to, um, you know, like back and forth, and you you find out that something happened with with the dad, with Kate's father. Like I said, he's an artist, artist, and apparently these pictures show up, like drawings that he's done. Um, that the school finds. So, going back a little bit too. So in the book, when they kind of like going back and forth, so it talks about how one night, um, it was a particular night and I don't really remember what was going on that night. I probably should take notes. But they they got a text from Kate that said, I need you. And like Kate wasn't at the school at that time. I'm not sure where Thea was. I don't know if Thea was with her. I don't remember where Thea was at that time, but um Isa and Fatima were in like their dorm room, I guess. And um I'm going to be using the Chanel La Volume de Chanel today because it's like my favorite mascara. It's getting really dark outside. This rain around here is crazy. I'm like all over the place. This is going to be a crazy video. Um, so yeah, but before, like they get the text and they, they go or call at that point. You know, I don't, I don't know. I, I think they did have cell phones, so... I'm not sure the time frame of when it, the book is 2015. It doesn't really say. Um, it doesn't really say, like, I don't remember. I know it's just been 20 years since they've been in school. Um, so they're they're in their 20s? No. they got to be in their 30s because they were, like, 16 and 17. Um, so, yeah. So one night they, they all rushed to Kate and... They come back. They have to come back. So they, so you kind of find out that night where the human bone comes from, but you don't know why. You don't know what happened, how it happened, or why. So they go back to school. Uh, Kate makes them go back to school, and she's like, I don't want y'all to get caught. I'm going to stay here. 
because uh, I have permission to leave the campus because of my dad and all this stuff. So they go back to school and I guess like the headmistress, like <laughs> on Hallmarks and shit, but the headmistress comes in and wakes Kate and Fatima up and says, be in my office in 10 minutes. So they get themselves up hurriedly because, and, and they've apparently been drinking that night too because they talk about how they've been stumbling and all this other stuff. And so they go to see the headmistress and she has out on her desk these apparently nude photos of them. Not, not like actual camera photos, but drawings, I should say, of, of them. And wants to know where they're from and who did them. But she already has her suspicions of who did them. And, you know, basically he's going to have to suffer the consequences. So, you know, okay, well, Kate's dad is an artist and he's always, like, drawing. But they never really know what he's drawing. Um, so apparently, you see, I still... That's where it's kind of like, because when you find out what happened, it doesn't actually say where those pictures come from. Because when you finally find out what happens, it's, it's like he couldn't have drawn those pictures. So I think it doesn't really say. Uh, Isa kind of like says it, but I think that Kate drew those pictures. And I'm not going to say any more. Because it does say how Kate has his same style, but yet it's a little bit different. But, like, you can't, it's very hard to tell between the art of her art and her father's art. So, by the end of the book, you're kind of thinking, well, as well with Isa, that, okay, Kate drew these pictures. She had to. So, she had to, like, um, she came up with, I got mascara in my hair. <laughs> But she came up with this story herself, lied to them, and planted these pictures somewhere for the headmistress to find. And, yeah, so, okay, so then you start thinking, okay, well, something happened with Kate's dad, and this is why, this is why that happened the previous night before. I don't want to give too much away in case y'all want to read the book. And I don't want to, I, hate, I feel like I'm talking bad about it, but it really was good. It really was a good book. Um, I'm, I'm giving it 3.75 be, because of the fact that it, it kind of had me off and on. I was, I was interested and really wanted to read it. And then I was kind of like, uh, but I really need to read it and find out what happened. So it, it was kind of up and down for me. And then I was just kind of disappointed in how it ended. I mean, you get, you get the whole thing, like it comes all together for you, but it just doesn't, it's not what, what, what you want it, I guess I should say. You know how some books do that? You're like you're getting it all up in your mind that like, oh God, this is, this is what it is. And there's going to be more to it. And a lot of the, the books that I've been reading lately are always, or have, it's, have had, I can't talk, have had like just, just crazy twisted endings. So I'm just like all excited by the end of the book. And like that would, I have, would have never figured that that would have happened. But um, anyway, so I guess that's why this one just wasn't um, great for me because it didn't have that feel for me. But it was still a good book. It still kept me, like, on my toes and wanting to know what found, what happened and wanting to know how, you know, how it came down to that and then what they were going to do about it. So, towards, yeah, like I said, towards the end, everybody comes out and things start to come together and you start to figure it out on your own pretty much. So, it's kind of, that's also, it's kind of like, it's not like a really big surprise um because you kind of already figured it out on your own throughout the book so i guess that's why it wasn't so exciting for me because i, I felt like i already knew what was going to happen and and then i was expecting it since i kind of knew what was going to happen i was expecting there to be more to it but then there wasn't so that's why i'm giving it 3.75 I think that's pretty much it. Um, 
I know this was probably all over the place. I don't know. I'm going to have to go back and see, like, how I feel about, you know, what, what I said about the book. Um, if I'm going to post this or not. I mean, I'll post it, but, you know, I may be too rambly and all over the place. I don't, I don't know how, if I'm, like, giving the book any justice. If you like, you know, mysteries and things like that, um, I'm using the It Bye Bye Pores by It Cosmetics. It's naturally pretty. It's just a pretty neutral pink. I think it's just kind of like goes with everything. It's pretty much my go-to blush. But, um, but yeah, I don't want to, I did like the book. I enjoyed reading it. Like I said, it, it did take me two weeks, but, um, I mean, that's not that, that's not really that long. I mean, I've had books that take me longer that I'm really like not really that into. But if you like mysteries and like, um, this was more of not like a psychological thriller. It was just like a regular suspenseful type and not even really suspenseful. Maybe up until the end, it got a little suspenseful, but um, it was just mainly a, a good a good mystery, but not like a cozy mystery. I'm going to use my Tarte Goddess Glow um, highlighter because it's just a pretty, it's a pretty highlighter. I feel like I can, I can like just really pack it on and it's not going to be too much, you know, um, but it still gives you a pretty glow. All right, so the star of the show is this lipstick. Um, I've already primed with my um, Sarah Hap stuff. So let's just go ahead and put this on. I, my camera's like making me really nervous now. Like I keep peeking at it. It looks like we're still live. <laughs> See, it's just a pretty color. I don't even know how to um, describe this color. But it's really pretty. It's not something I'm used to wearing, so it's, it's really fun. I don't know if I have a lip liner. That'll do this justice. Let me try, um, let me try Whirl. This is my Whirl lip liner from MAC. So la the natural line of my lip goes kind of low, so I always like to have a lip liner to smooth those edges out. There we go. I think it's really pretty. I really like this shade is C Sheer from MAC. Really pretty. Okay, y'all, I think I done enough damage. I probably bored y'all to death in this video, um, but I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like got a rocker chic kind of look um, with what my, the craziness of my hair today. I wish I would have had false lashes to put on for y'all, but I actually have no false lashes. I need to buy some. Um, that would have really added to this look. I really like this. This is this is this is fun. Um, so I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope y'all enjoyed the review as well. Definitely go follow me on Goodreads. I'll I have a lot other reviews on books that I've previously read. Um, I also listen to books, so I also put those on there too. And uh, so yeah, if y'all like this, give it a thumbs up and let me know. Um, I'll do some more. Like I said, I hope y'all enjoyed. This video, everything that I used will be uh, linked down below as well as all my social medias and that's it. Hope y'all have a great day, whatever day this is. I'm not sure when I'm going to put this up, but I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all.